Okay, I don't have long before he finds me, guys, but I really have to show you this amazing Thanos. No, no, no. I'm not gonna lie, getting disintegrated was actually pretty fun, so let's try doing it to a cat. All we need to do is click, and the cat will disappear. And to do this, it only takes about 40 lines of code, so let's jump right into it. The first thing that we need to do is we have an index.html file which is going to contain our image. I also have all of the different script tags and JavaScript that we need for our project already downloaded. So the main things we're going to need is HTML to Canvas, which will allow us to convert an HTML element to a Canvas element, pretty self-explanatory, and then disintegrate.js, which will allow us to take a Canvas element and break it apart into a bunch of small pieces, which gives you the disintegration effect. I also have a style sheet here and a script tag linked so that we can write our custom JavaScript and our custom CSS. Now the first thing that we want to do is actually create the div that's going to contain our image. So let's just create here a div. We're going to give it an ID, which is just going to be image, so we can reference this later. And we can close that off. That's all we need to do for now. We can save that and jump into our styles.css. Inside of here, we first want to select the body and just get rid of all the margin and padding, so that way our image is going to go up all the way to the sides of our screen. And then we can select that image that we have. And all we want to do here is we want to set the width to 100 view widths. We just want to take up the entire screen. We also want to do the same thing for the height, but we want to use view height instead. We also want to set that background image, and I already have my image selected and downloaded. You can just use any image that you want, but this image will be available in the GitHub repo linked below, and it's just called cat.jpg. Then what I want to do is I want to change background size here to be cover. This way it'll just fill the entire screen, and I want to set the background position to be center, just so that it's going to show the cat in the middle. And if we save that, open it up using live server, so just right click on our index.html, open with live server, and we'll see that open up over here. And of course, when we click, it's not going to do anything, but that's perfectly okay. Now, in order to get started with the disintegration using disintegrate.js, we need to go back to our index.html, and we need to add in a class here, a data attribute, which is going to be data dis, which stands for disintegration, type, and we want to set this to simultaneous. If I can spell that properly, there we go. And this is just going to allow us to make those disintegration particles and hook it up with the disintegrate.js library. Now we can jump into the script.js and start writing the code here. First thing we need to do is we need to use the disintegrate library, so we'll just type in disintegrate here, and we want to say .init. This is just going to get things started and working for us so that we can actually use the disintegrate library. Then after that, we want to get our element. So we're going to say document.getElementById, and we gave it an ID of image, if you remember. We want to add an event listener, because we want to listen for whenever we click on that event, we want to do something. So we're just going to take that, create a function here. Let's make our screen a little bit larger. There we go. And the first thing that we want to do is we want to get the object that we're going to disintegrate. So we're just going to say dis object. And we're just going to set this equal to disintegrate dot get dis object, just like that. And we want to just pass it in the element. So in our case, e.target is just going to be this image element here. Then once we have that image that we want to destroy, we can just call disintegrate here. Whoops disintegrate. We want to call create simultaneous, if I can spell that again, particles. And we just want to pass it in that object, just like that. And that's all we need to do for now. We're going to save that. And as you see, when we click over here, it's going to disappear, but we have an image showing up behind it because the image actually doesn't disappear. It's just this new object we create. So what we want to do is we want to target that original image and we just want to say remove. Whoops, just remove. And now if we save that and click, you see the image disappears and we get the nice particle effect. But as you can see, if I refresh here, this particle effect is not at all what Thanos' effect looks like. So we need to create our own custom particle effect in order to make it look exactly as we want it to. So in order to do that, we need to just create a variable. We can just say const Thanos snap. And we want to set it equal to a function. And this function is going to be all of the code that we need to do to make our actual particles move around properly. So this function right here is going to be called for every single particle that gets created when we click on our screen over here. So when we click every single one of those little particles that gets created, this function is going to be called once for each one of them. There's also a this.draw property. So this.draw, if I can spell that properly, there we go, this.draw. And we just need to set this equal to a function. Here we go. And this dot draw function is going to get called for essentially every single tick that the particle exists. So it's just going to get called over and over and over again. And this is where we can change the values of that particle in order to make it move and disappear. And this takes two properties. The first one is the context. This is just the canvas context. And the next one is the percent complete. 
so we know how far along we are with our animation. Also, there's a few properties that we need to set in this function. The first one is this dot animation, whoops, animation duration. And this just says how long in milliseconds the animation will last. In our case, we'll do one and a half seconds. We also need to set the name of this animation. So we're just going to call this Thanos snap. This way we can reference it later for our actual animation. Again, this is going to have a couple other properties, which are the start X and the start Y, but we don't need to set those. Those are already set by each individual particle when it comes a part of the actual world. So when we click, as soon as that happens, all of the particles will get their own X and Y position already set for them. So let's just jump down here into our actual draw method and see what we want to do. The first thing we want to do is we want to actually start drawing. So we're going to say context.begin path. This is going to allow us to start drawing our rectangles that we're going to create on our screen. And then we want to use context.fill rect. And this will allow us to create a rectangle. And we need to put the dimensions of the rectangle in here as well as the start and end position. So we know that we have this dot start x, which is going to be the start position. And we have a size that we want to use. So we're just going to say this dot size and divide it by 2. And this is going to be our start position. We're going to do the exact same thing for y. So we'll say start y. And again, these start y and start x properties are already set as soon as the particle is created. So we already have these created. We can do this dot size again and divide it by 2. And then lastly, we can just say this dot size is how wide we want it to be, and this dot size is how tall we want it to be because we want it to be a square. And we need to create this dot size variable because it doesn't exist yet. So we're just going to default that to 3, for example. Now, if we save that, we're going to have our rectangle being drawn in the correct location with the correct size, which is great. The next thing we need to do is set what color we want that rectangle to be. So we can say context.fill style. And in here is where we actually define what we want our RGBA values to be. And this is a string. So we can say RGBA. And the first value that we want is going to be our red value. So we're going to create a variable, which we'll call R. And we're going to pass it into there. We're going to do the same thing with our green. Same thing with the blue. Make sure this is a comma here. And lastly, we're going to do the exact same thing with our alpha value. And this is just going to be our fill value. And we need to set these RGBA values. And luckily for us, the red, green, blue values of our image are actually saved in a value called this dot RGBA array. And in here we have different properties. So zero is going to be R. So we can say const R is equal to the zero. We can do the same thing, but we can do it for our green, which is going to be one. And again, we have our blue, which is going to be two. So now we have our red, green, and blue taken care of. And for our alpha, we actually want to set this based on how far the animation is completed. So we're just going to say 1 minus percent complete, because this is between a value of 0 and 1. So as soon as the animation starts, it'll be 0. And as soon as the animation is done, it'll be 1. So that means our squares here will become slowly more and more transparent as the animation goes on, which is exactly what we want. Now, in order to draw that, all we need to do is we can just call context.fill. This is actually going to draw that onto it for us. And now if we save that, go back to our index.html, and we want to set the data this particle type. This is just going to say what type of particle we want to use. And we called this Thanos snap. So we'll just type that in. And we're also going to come in here and set the reduction factor. And this is just going to allow us to create more particles. The smaller the value, the more particles we get. It defaults to 35. We're going to just set this to 10. It depends on how powerful your computer is, how low you can actually set this value. So now if we save that and we click over here, you'll see that it still does the exact same thing as it did before. And that's because we actually need to add this Thanos snap to our project. To do that, we just type in disintegrate, and we just want to call add particle type, and we just pass it that function we just created, which is Thanos snap. Now if we save that and click, you'll see it still doesn't work properly, and that's because we need this to be lowercase. It needs to match our function name. So now if we save that and click, you'll notice it just disappears. All of our particles are up in this corner, which you probably can't see, and that's not at all what we want. And that's because if we look into here, we actually aren't updating any of our variables. We're not updating our start position, our end position. We're not updating anything except for the actual alpha value. So we need to actually create some methods and some functions that are going to update that for us. The first thing we need is we're going to need some speed variables for how fast we actually want our particles to move. So we can say speed x. I just want to set that here to math.random. This is just going to give us a random value between 0 and 1. And we're going to do the exact same thing for speed y. But we're going to multiply this by negative 1 because that'll make it move in the up direction because we want our particles to move up and to the right by default. So now that we have our speed x and our speed y, 
we can come down here and we can say that our start x, we just want to add it so we can say plus equals to this dot speed x. And this is just going to slowly make our start position on the x move more and more to the right as time goes on. We can do the exact same thing, but for y, so we'll say start y and speed y. And now if we save that and click, you'll see again, nothing happens. And that's actually because this value, it should be RGB array, not RGBA array. Now if we save that and click, you'll notice our particles slowly move up into the right, and we're getting a lot closer to what that thanos like effect looks like. But if you remember from the earlier example, the particles actually shrunk in size as they moved, and they got faster as they moved. So we want to increment our speed. So we can say this dot speed y is going to be times equal to 1.07. So it's going to get 7% faster every single time it goes through here. And we can do the same thing with x. Our x speed is going to get 7% faster. Now as we click, you see the particles get massively faster as time moves on, which is great. Also, we want to make them shrink. So we can just say this dot size is going to be times equal to 0.95, for example. And this just means it's going to get a little bit smaller, 5% every single time. And as you can see, our particles shrink and move faster as they go. And this is all really great. Now, the really only last thing that we have left to do is we want to make our particles kind of spawn in a random position when we click, because right now they all stay exactly where they started. And we want them to move a little bit from their initial starting place. So we can say, whoops, there we go. We can say if this dot first. So if this is the first time this function is ran, we're going to create that variable, this dot first, and just set it equal to true. And then inside of here, we're just going to set that variable to false. So this dot first equals false. So this is only going to get ran one time. And inside of here, what we want to do is we want to take our start x and we want to plus equal it to math.random, math.random. This is going to give us a random value between 0 and 1, as I said. We want to subtract 0 0.5 from it, and then we just want to multiply it by 10. And the reason we subtract 0 0.5 is that way we get a value between negative 0 0.5 and positive 0 0.5, so it can move either backwards or forward. And then we multiply by 10 to make it so it moves further than if we didn't multiply by anything. And we can do the exact thing, same thing here for our y. And now if we save that and click, you'll see our particles actually all move away from their initial starting location, which gives it a bit more of a random effect. And just like that, we're done. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other project-based tutorials linked over here, and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Thank you all very much for watching, and have a good day.